Hey team, today I'm going to be answering your admissions questions about Canadian medical schools. My name is Danny Kalani. I'm a first year medical student in Canada. A few days ago, I asked students at my alma mater, Western University, for their questions about the Canadian medical school admissions process. We're going to answer their questions right now. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more on medical school admissions, mindsets, and more. I'll also disclose my GPA and MCAT scores at the end, so make sure to stick around for that. Question number one is, could you disclose if you used any prep companies for application essays or for interviews. I actually didn't use any prep companies for application essays or the interview process. Quite frankly, I'm skeptical towards those types of services because they have no investment in your success. These companies are getting paid hundreds if not thousands of dollars whether or not you utterly fail or succeed. Later on, I'm going to prepare for you a video on application essays and the interview process so that we can kind of go through what you need to know and how you can best prepare yourself. But in the meantime, I'll give you some top tips. For your application essay, you wanna have multiple iterations of it done. You can get a friendly medical student to look it over for you and provide you with some good feedback. I myself have done this for other students who've asked me to, and it's a way of paying it forward from the medical students that I asked in my application cycle to do the same for me. You should be also trying to get multiple different perspectives. I'm a big advocate of getting a greater sample size because that gives you more opinions and more feedback of which you can choose to critically assess. You can do something similar for interviews as well. For interviews, I would ask medical students for half an hour to an hour of their time to briefly go through some interview questions. Again, medical training depends on a lot of kindness from those who've trained before you. So don't be afraid to ask medical students for help because they're probably happy to if they can. When I train with medical students, I'd provide them with multiple mini interview questions as well as panel interview questions that we could go through over the course of that hour or so. I'll also link the question resources that I used during my preparation. And those resources were actually provided to me by medical students who had gone through the process in the past. And I'll repeat this again, you wanna get a large sample size. Getting a good number of opinions here is key. If you're doing traditional multiple mini interviews, you're probably going to be interviewed by many, many different strangers. So doing your interview prep with people who are strangers to you is actually the best way of simulating the conditions. So just to sum it up, I wouldn't rely on resources that I have to pay for. I think there's a lot of kindness in the medical field and medical students will be happy to lend a helping hand if they can. These could even be strangers. For me, most of them were strangers and that actually helped out going into that interview process. Next question. Do you need to complete your bachelor's degree before getting into a Canadian medical school? The answer to this is going to vary based on the schools that you're applying to, and remember that these do change year to year. Some schools like the University of Toronto and McMaster University will take third year applicants and not require them to complete their degree before matriculating. And the University of Calgary is pretty unique as well in that they'll take second year applicants and not require them to finish a bachelor's degree before being admitted. Other universities like the University of Western Ontario or the University of Alberta require you to finish your bachelor's degree before applying. I personally did three years of an undergraduate degree before starting medical school and didn't end up graduating with a bachelor's degree at all, not even a three-year degree. And while I could go back and finish that degree after medical school, it does seem a little bit aimless to me right now. I really love this question and I'm not sure I know the answer to it, but I'm gonna give it a shot. What do I think are the top three things that got me into medical school? I'm a big fan of the idea that systems and mindsets are what produce results. So I'm gonna tell you about the three mindsets that I have used that I believe helped me get into medical school. Number one is the principles of time management. And there are three main ones. Number one, if you use time intentionally, it's only spent and never wasted. Number two, time is a limited resource. And number three, there is never not enough time, only choices to not make time. The second mindset that I think got me into medical school is the growth mindset. The growth mindset says that you should seek to improve every single day of the year. If you've ever heard of compounding returns, you're probably familiar with the concept that small gains every day are far better than single time improvements. You can apply a growth mindset to whatever you need to. I've applied it to my studying for the MCAT, how I manage my time, and also my personal traits. And I'll give you an example of how I applied it to change my personal traits. I was personally way more introverted and shy going into university than when I was admitted to medical school. If you've met a lot of physicians, you probably haven't met many with weak communication skills. In identifying what some might consider a weakness in myself, I made intentional choices to try and become more comfortable socially, in leadership positions, and public speaking. To grow, I had to both believe that I could change as well as find ways to promote that self-development. I went to events held by clubs where I knew no one and 
the aim there was to just meet people and chat and make small talk to try and improve that skill. I also started my own club to improve my leadership skills while also learning how to manage a team and work with a team. I also tried to ask and answer more questions in lectures rather than holding back and hoping that someone else would ask a question or answer it before me. Each of these choices was hard for me to make at the time, but I understood how vital a skill communications is, whether that be for getting admitted to a medical school or just improving my life in general. And I'm sure that improving my communication skills has had compounding returns throughout my entire life. You probably don't have the same challenges that I do. And I can assure you that applying small changes throughout your life is going to get you far greater returns than doing nothing today. Tip number three is to stop overvaluing other people's opinions. And don't count me out. I have spent time being overly fixated on what other people think of me and been held back in doing things that I thought would be quite interesting to do. And when you live in fear of other people judging you, you're not going to take the opportunities that you have to share what you have to bring to the table. Once you get over that fear, that's when you can start to take risks that have the potential to change your life. I actually tried to start up a company using a machine learning algorithm that I developed for identifying parasites under a microscope during my second year of my undergraduate degree. I basically reached out to anyone who might hear my pitch and have a chance at me getting it to the right people. After cold emailing some experts in parasitology, I realized that this idea did not have the potential for real world implementation. And I gave up and I was perfectly fine with that. I wasn't afraid that other people were going to judge me about it. To me, avoiding taking chances because of fear that other people are going to judge you is not the way that I want to live. I don't think that I would be satisfied with that on my deathbed. Another risk that I took was starting up a club around an approach to health issues called One Health, which looks at health at the intersection of humans, animals, and the environment. The reason why I consider it a risk is because basically no one knew what One Health was at my university. And of the people that did know about it, not too many were highly interested in it at the time. So starting up that club with zero interested members was definitely a risk that I decided to take and I'm proud that I did. And the initial growth for the club actually came from social media. So if I was to fail, it was going to be in front of everybody else online to see. And in addition to that risk of failure, I was just cold emailing people who might have an idea of how to get this club started and running nicely. In the process, I was honestly quite surprised of the amount of people who were willing to help and who were able to offer their own personal insight into how to make this club more successful. And gradually, you can see the returns in the way that my network grew from there. If you want to start your own initiative, business, club, whatever it may be, make sure to check out my other video on pre-med extracurriculars. I go way into depth with this in terms of why you would wanna do it and some ways that you can go about getting started. Overall, the message here is that you should do your own thing regardless of judgment and embrace failure rather than avoid it. You can start a club, initiative, or business around something that you think you might be the only one interested in, or even just take the chance of applying to a position even if you're not sure that you'll get it. Quite frankly, the only way to run into life-changing opportunities is to put yourself out there and hope that it gets you in the right place. And now for the question that many of you have probably been waiting for. Can you tell us more about your program, where you applied, as well as your GPA and MCAT? And I'm going to make a video in the future on my full path to medical school because this video is not going to do that justice. But to briefly summarize, I did three years in a medical sciences undergraduate degree at the University of Western Ontario. And then I specialized in my third year of my program into the specialization called One Health, which was fairly new at the time. My GPAs throughout my first, second, and third year were fairly consistent. I was able to adapt to university fairly quickly, and in my first and second years, I got a GPA of 3.96. And going into my third year, I was able to pull it up just a little bit to a 3.97 on the 4.0 OMSAS scale. I also took the MCAT following the second year of my undergraduate degree with an overall score of 520, which is around a 98th percentile. With my section score, being 132 in chemistry and physics, 127 in cars, which wasn't what I was hoping for, 131 in biology and biochemistry, and 130 in psychology and sociology. To me, applying during my third year of university was actually a trial run and honestly went better than I expected. So I only applied to the University of Calgary because I had just finished writing my MCAT and only had so much time to work on an application. My expectation there was that getting an interview would be 
what I would consider to be a success. When I got an interview invite in the new year, I was pumped for it. And honestly, I kept that mindset that this was still a trial run and that I was going to get to see what the interview process was like at the University of Calgary. And then a few months following the interviews, I was put on the wait list at the University of Calgary and that was a stressful few months. I didn't know whether I'd be going back to my fourth year of my undergraduate degree or getting an acceptance soon. Eventually it got to around July and I was getting to the point that I had lost all hope of that wait list turning into an acceptance because classes had already started. And then out of the blue, four days after classes were set to start, I got an offer of admission and I was surprised. I thought it was a spam email or they had made a mistake here. I realized that most people don't get in after the third year. The average number of times that someone applies before getting into a medical school is three times. Throughout the process, I kept that long-term mindset. And I think that helped me thinking that I was going to prepare for this because this was going to be the best opportunity that I had to learn. The best thing that you can do throughout the process is to have this long-term mindset that this is going to be a learning experience for you. And that however far you get in the process, it's going to be something that you can take away from and learn from going into future cycles. Plus, it's going to allow you to focus on the outcomes that are within your control as opposed to beyond it. If you stay till the end, thank you so much. I love helping out pre-med students because I know from personal experience that it takes a village to get someone admitted to a medical school. So if you have questions for me, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or send me an Instagram DM and I'll make sure to get back to you. Feel free to leave a like on this video if you found it helpful or a dislike if you didn't. That's all from me. Thanks team.